five. The workshop for Career Workforce Pathways for September 6, 2022 is now called to order. I'd like to first um, thank all of our guest panel, and I'll be handing it over to Superintendent Davis uh, in just a few minutes. But as we know, um, we're seeing more and more the importance of students being connected to different career paths and the career technical mm -hmm. education and how important it is in our community and really looking at how we're going to reimagine learning for our students. So this is a great workshop because it discusses three different organizations and tells us what we're doing and how we've uh, partnered with all of them and what we're doing for our students. Um, and we see more and more that more students are looking at careers and making sure they have a skill as they move forward. And I want to thank all our panelists and Superintendent Davis will give you a moment to um, thank everyone and uh, introduce everybody. Mm. And, and finally, our workshop this time, one of the things that um, I heard from all the workshop from all the school board members is we want more time to engage and ask questions. So we'll have a shorter time with each individual group presenting and that will give us more time as school board members to engage and ask questions and see how we can further this. Superintendent Davis? Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you, Ms. Combs. I really appreciate the opportunity today. This is extremely important. This is a major bucket that we have as um, this administration to be able to expand the opportunities of workforce development. We understand that the majority of students that we serve within Hillsborough County will be transitioned to the workplace. And we, what we want to do is continue to have beautiful partners as we have here today with Kevin and Vaughn and John to be able to identify, uh, you know, pathways that just make sense for our students and actually fill the void and keep our students engage in uh, careers to allow them to earn a livable wage, but the same token, keep them in the Tampa region. And these are what these entities do and bring to the table with, you know, the, the Future Career Academy at the same token with Career Source and what Kevin does with, um, you know, with his partnerships within our school, within our community. It really allows us to be able to create the best experiences for our students. But a lot of this doesn't get done without having individuals on the ground to help us with this work. And uh, Chris and and Scott do a wonderful job in their team to be able to create the expansion of our CTE programs at the same token being able to increase the number of students that are involved in these types of pathways. And it's just not spraying pathways in all of our schools, but being very surgical about what pathways are being offered and then getting students in front of internships, uh, potential apprenticeships with our technical adults. And at the same token, just having the individuals transition inside and outside of our classrooms to expose them about content content careers and availability of options for, for our students. And we just don't allow workforce development to stand by itself. We work to have stackable credentials of the students that are taking CTE classrooms and CTE examinations. We expose them to do enrollment classrooms as well. And then those students who are in acceleration opportunities, you want them to be actively engaged in CTE. And, you know, the beauty of having, you know, summer jobs that we have with our community, the beauty of making certain that we have opportunities for our students to transition to job fairs just really allows them to have a sense of hope in this community. And this partnership is not only in isolation to this side of the table, but the board being able to see that vision to be able to move and leverage everybody inside and outside of this room and in the community has allowed us to be a leader in the state of Florida. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Davis. So we'll go ahead and begin. Um, and I think we start with um, Yvonne Fry with Future Career Academy. We'll go ahead and hand it over. And, or if, if each of you would like to introduce yourselves quickly, I think that would be great. Okay. Sorry. Kevin Barber uh, with the Iron Workers Local 397. Thank you, Mr. Barber. Yvonne Fry with Workforce Development Partners. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. John Flanagan, Career Source Tampa Bay. Thank you. And of course, everybody knows Mr. Brooks and Mr. Jargo and all, all the great work you do. So thank you so much. We'll go ahead and start with Ms. Ms. Fry. Thank you so much to each of you for the invitation, the opportunity, the ongoing partnership. Um, we started um, our program in 2015 out in Plant City, and we're going to talk about its growth and so on. Um, but the, without the partnership, and you're going to hear that over and over, that's the foundation of what we do is the partnership with the district, our community members, our, our businesses, and our community organizations, and so on. And I wanted to start out this morning with a quick video. Um, 
just as an overview to really bring things to life and then we'll, we'll dig in a little bit further. Like this is important to seniors because it gives them the opportunity to express themselves and maybe expand on what they want to accomplish in the future. The biggest issue that we run into in education with the kids is them not knowing exactly what they want to do. Because nowadays a college degree can only take you so far without that career experience. It broadens their horizon, it exposes them to a lot of different people. Experience a whole bunch of job opportunities and allow myself to be able to see everything that I could do after high school. It gives us an idea of what's really out there. The Future Career Academy is a year-long curriculum-based program that prepares and connects graduating seniors with the great jobs and training opportunities in their community. Started over seven years ago in Plant City, the program has grown as a grassroots initiative at one high school to serving all seniors in Hillsborough County for the 2022-2023 school year. The unique thing about the Future Career Academy is it gives our seniors hope. Seniors can look at jobs in their community, jobs that are not just short-term, that can be long-term careers for them. The Hillsborough County Public Schools is so excited to support the Future Career Academy because it provides our students with so much hope and so many opportunities to have a wonderful career and a wonderful future for their lives. The Future Career Academy is grateful for the partnership with the school district, Hillsborough County and other government agencies, the business community, and many community-based partners. High school seniors begin their journey in the Future Career Academy through in-class curriculum, such as industry exploration videos, career choice discussions, professional development and workforce activities, and other assignments such as resume building and interview skills that tie right into their English 4 curriculum. In addition to their in-class curriculum, students are given the opportunities to attend four major events hosted by the Future Career Academy throughout the year. Our kickoff event gives students the opportunity to hear from leading employers through interactive business panels at each school to start the school year. Next, students attend field trips to area businesses. Students are given the chance to visit several companies throughout the day and learn firsthand about different employers in their community. In April each year, students attend the Future Fair Job Fair, which allows them to meet with leading companies, apply for jobs, and possibly be hired on the spot. Students have the opportunity to visit various companies in a variety of industries and learn about available positions and find the right fit for them. The students are also given the opportunity at this event to attend interactive business panels to help ensure that they're prepared for the next steps into the workforce. The culmination of the Future Career Academy experience is our annual signing day at each school. Students who have secured new jobs, apprenticeships, or training programs are celebrated at signing day by school personnel, their new employers, and their peers. The Future Career Academy is changing the paradigm of success and building a stronger community. No debt, a great job with a thriving company, and a career path ahead is truly the American dream. Thank you so much. Um, our mission is to pre prepare and connect students to the great jobs and training opportunities in their communities. And as I mentioned, we were founded in 2015 as really a grassroots walkout of um, the needs that the businesses have. It, it truly sprang forth from the businesses saying, can we have access to seniors before they graduate? And we, we've tried to figure that out and have continued to evolve with input from the businesses in partnership with the CTE folks, with um, Scott and Chris guiding us along the way. And we're, we're so grateful for that. And I, I wanna call out Susan Sullivan, principal at Plant City High School. She was the first principal that was willing to walk through this and, um, and exemplifies that, that moniker of doing what's right for kids. And that's what this is all about, is what's right for kids and how do we um, tee up bigger, better opportunities for them and understanding. If you come to present day, um, we are serving all 32 high schools. Um, now, we just added Dorothy Thomas. They reached out, um, Kelly Simmons, that had originally been at Newsom last year, said we want in too. So we are official count of 32 high schools this year. And as we mentioned, um, we've got different aspects of curriculum that served up one day a week for the entire year in their English classes in their senior year. 
So um, we are appreciative. We've worked with Daniela Simic and um, Tracy and Lori and that whole team to really be able to integrate this well from a curriculum perspective um, across the board of all the different content and so on. And I will mention also that all seniors are invited, even though our curriculum piece is really um, focused for English 4 and English 4 Honors. Those AP classes, if they've got time and they're able to bring it in, but all of those students are invited to participate in all of our exper experiences because there's many of our employers that will pay for college, that will shepherd them and, and help them along the way. So it is open to all seniors and I wanted to make mention of that. We've divided those 32 schools into eight different communities and I believe that our, our board members have seen these. Um, we really wanted to make sure that we were community-based, number one for transportation. Transportation is an issue for those entering the workforce and we want to make sure that there are local accessible jobs that they can, they can take advantage of. But the second piece of this is community building. And this is a holistic lift, not just focused on students, but also on families, on all the resources that we can wrap around um, for, for those whole communities. And um, I, I want to give special mention to Sue Burkett and Gary and Owen, I don't know where Sue ended up, but to say thank you for helping us to look at the overlay of the business communities, the chambers, the EDCs, the CDCs, all of those, as well as the culture and communities of our schools and how do we build out those eight communities. Um, our work plan includes several different things that I want to touch on, and the first one is about is, is underway, rolling out this month, um, and this was actually the genesis of our whole program. I have a, a firm belief that if you put the right people in the right process at the table, magic happens, and in this case it did. We brought together business and community leaders out in Plant City um, eight years ago, and that's where one of our manufacturers put their hand in the air and said, can we get in front of your seniors before they graduate? And um, our business advisory boards will be housed in each of the communities. We will do four meetings a year and go to each of the different schools that are in that community. The whole point of this is to build direct relationships between the businesses and our community leaders and those administrators. Those administrators need so much help and support in a thousand different ways. And facilitating those relationships is extremely important. I, I, we, we group these by geography of who we're inviting, but we also are very strategic that the CTE programs that are housed at the different high schools, how do we bring in those employers where they say, I'm here to help. I've got resources, I've got mentorship, I've got jobs, and making sure that we're making very clear connections in a meaningful way for those kids that we're activating them with opportunities beyond high school. So. Um, we're, the next thing that is up, we will have 32 business panels. We'll go to each school, and this is about casting a vision of hope um, and what's ahead this year and how do they activate and do that. And I'm so pleased to announce Robert Bulai is going to be our face in front of our kids. Yes, that's the same reaction I had. Um, he's going to be our face in front of the kids all year long. And his heart for this, he's still working in his other spot. He is being able to, to divide his time and dedicate to this, and we are thrilled. We know that the students will really receive this message from him, and then the great um, companies that we've got teed up to be a part of this, and we're very excited. Um, and w invite y'all to join us for those as well. The My favorite day of the year is in January and February. I get up at four o'clock those mornings and say, it's field trip day. <laughs> yes, yes. And this is the tipping point for our kids. You might have kids that have not been as successful in four walls in a classroom and they go see people working with their hands. You might go out to Bash and Lom and see somebody that's a scientist who started as an entry level position and didn't have the grades, didn't think they could ever be a scientist and they have shepherded them through with advanced degrees and opportunities and on and on and on with all these different um, opportunities that they see. We put them on buses, thank you to the partnership there. Um, one of the things that we piloted last year in Plant City and that we're gonna continue is during the lunch, um, Career Source and Hillsborough Technical Colleges, HCC, we activate the kids because they've seen what additional training will help them with their career path and making more money, so that's the time that we introduced that. But we also introduced um, some of our government partners last year. The city of Plant City, um, we saw a picture, of, if, you, if you noticed, out in the stadium, they had over 80 team members that came out and put on a very interactive 
um, presentation with diverse young employees from all different departments and behind them in the stadium came a parade of equipment. And then we, we staged that out on this field. The kids came out and got to meet all of those and see the equipment and it just really activated them. I see around Citizenship 101, who paves your streets, who picks up your trash, how does water come out of your spigot? But beyond that, the great jobs and the pride of working in government and what that opportunity presents. So those days are very robust, very exciting, and several of you have gotten to join us. You got on a bus all day last year. We invite you to come and experience that. It is, it is so exciting, and you will definitely learn something about the type of employers and so on that we have. From there, what all this is driving towards is our future fairs. We are about jobs. And our, our goal with the future fair, we'll have 50 to 60 employers in each of these markets, um, very diverse types of industries, and um, we want the students to begin the application process here. If I had my way, and this is what we're all shooting for, so they start this application process, they go across the graduation stage, and they walk right in the front door of their job, or their training opportunity, or both. And we have great urgency around this because as our employers share, if they, if they fall in that chasm, they ruin their credit, they get a driving record, they get a criminal record, whatever else can happen, they spiral mental health issues on and on. We want that stability, that financial independence and empowerment journey to start immediately. And that's the urgency that we feel and that we carry in our bellies. Signing day is the day of victory. These are the early rewards, the early returns very quick turnaround from Future Fair to um, being able to, to get some people into these positions. But we want to put it out there and let their peers know this is real. You can do it. You know, if Jim Porter can get that job, you can too. And, and, and really be an encouragement and also change that paradigm for the juniors that are rising seniors to say, I want that to be me next year. I'd like them to put a camera on me and celebrate me and that that's something that I can see myself doing. So I wanted to share a little bit of data um, from this past year. We're working closely with um, Daniela and her team on um, gathering data this year. We're super excited about that. But there's two aspects that I'd like to share. The first one is perception. Without a vision, the people perish. You've got to have hope in your heart. And um, the if you'll look at this, the blue is what I want you to focus on. Um, how much job opportunity is there in your community? This is the day of the future fair as they're walking in. Um, uh, the blue is a lot. You see what happens after they have met and interacted with these businesses directly, um, how that moves the needle. The activation around that is intention. Are they going to act on that? Are they going to make this um, become real for themselves? And the yes is blue. That's quite a, quite a transition. Yes. We have to build that hope, we have to make it real, we have to put it in front of them and have them prepared, and that's what we're striving for. Um, we had mentioned this, and you saw this, how to make more money. Training is so essential. If you ask the seniors, a lot of seniors sitting in those classes right now, today, 2022, would they, do they want any more schooling when they're done? And they say, no, I'm, I, no, I have, this has not been fun. I, I'll just be honest with you. When we take them on a field trip, when they see different things, and you know, they see how that can enhance their career, how they can make more money, how they can advance. They are willing to talk about it. And that's where we come in with our partners for training and capitalize on that timing, that positioning, and make sure that those things are as turnkey as possible. Um, and we, it, it, it's so important. The apprenticeships, earn as you learn, um, is an, an, an essential element of this all the way through. Um, and then how employers are investing in their folks. Um, and I'll, I'll mention Career Source Tampa Bay, CDC of Tampa, others that have leaned in and really provided a lot of opportunity for them as well. Um, our model for success is three-pronged with an overlay of community partners. I come back to that every single time. But we're linking the school district, our businesses, and so on, but we have to have that triangulation and then the overlay of all the partners um, of all types that help make this such a success. And I want to give credit where credit is due. I'm a volunteer, but I have a team of professionals, some of which are represented here today. You see this lineup? Do you see a familiar face, anybody? That um, I'm, I'm so excited. Dustin is our latest addition to the team, and we are thrilled that every single one of these folks 
are just dynamic, committed professionals who are in the, working with our businesses, working directly with our schools, with teachers, with students, on and on to try and make sure that everybody is set up for their greatest success. And I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm very, very thankful um, and in awe of the work that they do. Um, I come back one more time to our community partners. I don't ever want to do anything alone. There is already such great work happening in our community by so many. And coming alongside of those folks and working together is essential. Um, they know who the great employers are. They know, you know, they, they know, they know it all. The trade associations and um, how they're helping us, um, they're pulling at us to leave, you know, to expand beyond this county. I'm telling them Hillsborough is our, our, our focus and our priority. And we are very, very grateful for all that is um, happening. I want to say one more time, thank you to the school board. Thank you to the superintendent. Um, Member Snively has, was at the very first meeting when our businesses um, really spoke this into existence. And as we have progressed, you know, each one of you have, have supported, have encouraged, have championed, have challenged us. Um, and that is something that we welcome, is how can we improve? How can we do better for our kids? How can we get better outcomes? How can we better serve as an economic impact, economic development, workforce development, to make our, our communities as strong and robust as we possibly can for our families? So with that, I say thank you. I, I may have gone a little bit over, but thank you very much for the opportunity and for the ongoing partnership. Thank, thank you very much, Ms. Fry. And what we'll do is we'll just have each group present and then we'll engage afterwards because that way we can make sure that every group has a presentation. I'll hand that over to you next, Mr. Barber, to talk about the union apprenticeships. I'm gonna start it out and then pitch it to Kevin if that's okay. We divided our slides in half this morning, but um, um, thank you guys. One of the things that obviously you heard from, from Ms. Fry about the, the, the how encompassing that entire program is. Um, one of the partners that's really been with us since day one on this journey almost has been um, our apprenticeship training programs that we carry or that we have within the school district. And so um, we have both union and non-union that all work for us. Um, we're a very large um, player in the statewide apprenticeship game. And so um, Kevin is here and he's going to go through a little bit of specifics with, um, with his group that he works with just to go through that. Um, one of the first slides is what is an apprenticeship? So if you bear with me just a couple quick seconds is um, – when we talk about apprenticeships, um, it's a structured training program governed by state standards. Um, it's one of the many post-secondary pathways. And the important part is there's 2,000 hours of OJT and then 144 hours of related instruction. The most important thing with this is these are adults that are working. Um, sometimes when we sit in different groups or you guys are around town and you'll be hearing, the word apprenticeship gets thrown around a lot right now, especially with all the financing. Um, but the important part is these are really men and women that are adults that are, you know, have already graduated. They're full-time workers in the workforce. Um, they're working. And a lot of times um, they're doing their trainings maybe at night or weekend or other times. But um, I'd just like to, to kind of show that. The, the next slide is just to give you an idea of how many groups we're associated with. Um, we have a, a lot of different apprenticeship groups since we've been here. It's consistently been growing as the trades have been growing, as Florida's really been booming. Um, we have continued to grow. And then also each of these different committees here, we have the contracts with um, both of those slides. You will notice some of them are not Hillsborough County. Um, because we have had so many and we've been working with them for years, we've extended out to different counties. And we also work with a lot of those committees. Um, and so that was just kind of give you an idea. The second one is an interesting slide. Um, and when you look at this, every year we bring you a board item, and that board item is for usually three, three and a half million dollars or something, and it says that we're paying all these apprenticeship committees this much money. Um, well, the important part for that is to understand is we really are almost a flow through with dollars. Um, the state of Florida sends the money in through us, and we're the LEA, the local education agency, and then we send that money to Kevin or the different committees all around the state. And so... Um, it's not like it's general fund money or some of that. It's really money coming in that they've earned through their instructional hours, their folks that are in training. We do put in there. The state funds it. We just happen to be – they will not fund them directly. It goes through us. So I just um, – sometimes when that item comes up, just a little bit of, of reference of sort of tying all those things together. You'll see that – and this is the amount of money we pay out. So you can see when it comes to apprenticeships, you can see that we're really second in the state for the amount of money that we pay out following Broward. Um, and then you see Orange, HCC, and some of the other folks um, quite a bit um, smaller than we are with that. And so now I'll turn it over to, to Mr. Barber for his um, What is an Iron Worker? Sorry, 
I ain't used to this stuff. Uh, I'm Kevin Barber. I'm with the Union Iron Workers. Uh, I represent the iron workers, uh, but I'm also a part of the other 16 uh, different union trades that are here uh, locally. Uh, the iron workers have been around since 1924, and we have been doing apprenticeship training since 1958. So uh, I think we got it down, you know, uh, down pat so far. Uh, we do have a state registered pre apprenticeship program for our adults. And we also have a state registered apprenticeship uh, for adults as well. Uh, we own our own facility and we are funded by our contractors. So our contractors pay into our apprenticeship fund uh, per each man hour worked on a job site. Uh, we also have a partnership. Uh, I want to say it's been over 35 years uh, with Hillsborough County Schools. Uh, and it does help pay uh, some of our consumables and you know stuff throughout for the year. Uh, our four-year apprenticeship is no tuition, so we don't charge any student anything. So our contractors uh, pay for their future workforce. Uh, we usually keep about 100 to 125 uh, state registered apprentices in our programs throughout the year. And we usually average about 20 to 25 uh, graduates just in the iron workers. Uh, Pre-apprenticeship, uh, we usually start out with about 65. Uh, that's more of a weeding out process to see if they like to trade uh, because they did not experience uh, the trade before uh, they come to us. But we'll start out with there and usually end up with about 30 after that, and that's how we feed into our apprenticeship program. Uh, JIWs, we represent about 500 journeyman iron workers. Uh, and I'd like to say thank you all to Scott, Lauren, Chris. They're very valuable uh, to us and your CTE programs. Uh, I don't think they would be... Uh, where they're at without them three, uh, definitely. And when I talked to Scott a while back and Chris and Lauren, uh, what alerted us is our average uh, apprentice was like 35 years old uh, before we started the program. Now we're down to 29, so uh, proves that it is working and we want to get it down. So that means there are students out there for 10, 11 years not doesn't know what they want to do uh, once they graduate high school. So... Uh, as a partner with them, we uh, do presentations. Uh, we help sponsor the new welding program, East Bay High School. Uh, we're connected with all the different welding programs. And we do field trips at our facility, and they get to do hands-on. Uh, Mr. Davis, if you'd like, we'd like to bring you in and uh, like you do some welding. And uh, we had Mr. Buckhorn a couple years back do it. So uh, we'd love to bring you in, put you in a weld booth. But yeah, we want to spark interest through these young students. Uh, because that's all they need is a little support and a little, uh, you know, like a goal. Uh, we've had a few foster students come in and didn't know what they're going to do, didn't have any confidence, any support, so that's what we want to do uh, here. We also, the program that we have in the schools is called the MC3. It's a multi-craft core curriculum. Uh, so what we do is we open their eyes to all the 16 different trades, let them know about the history of labor. Uh, of course, we're union, so we want to let them know, you know where your weekends come from, where your eight-hour workday, uh, workers' rights, make sure you have water on the job, treated fairly. Uh, that's what we do. Uh, during that, we also start out our apprentices at $18 an hour. Uh, we think that's a fair wage for starting out, and then they work their way up to that, up to 50 bucks an hour. Uh, but that's what we want to do, give them a little hope. Uh, 18 bucks an hour, you tell after four years, you'll be at $32 an hour. That puts a little hope into you. So, uh, And I think that's all I got. Thank, thank you, Kevin. Um, so one other quick thing, and um, Kevin talked a little bit about it. I just want to make sure we didn't get confused with it a little bit. But um, several years ago, the, the state of Florida really put out some grants and started pushing pre-apprenticeships. Now, pre-apprenticeships, that's something that we can do in the high schools. And so what we did with the help of Kevin and, and some of their team members was we went into some of our high schools, found some programs that really were outdated, quite honestly. Um, we went in, and, and with their help and their leadership, um, we, we went in there and, and we began several of these programs. And so um, here you can see that we began a welding program at we began a welding program in East Bay. We enhanced the welding programs at Hillsborough, Jefferson, Tampa Bay Tech. And then we started a construction and carpentry program at Bowers and then it, uh, expanded Middleton um, and Sickles. 
and then we created the pre-apprenticeship program at Plant City High. Those are for high school students. The beauty of that, we're actually teaching their curriculum. So what they're teaching to the adults, we're going ahead and doing it in high school. So when they graduate, they've already got a year ahead of the game. So when they move in, um, they're already used to the, the lingo. They understand what the expectation is moving in there. Um, we were lucky that our governor did put uh, several grants out. Um, we were very competitive. I think we got every one that they <laughs> put out. Um, our superintendent is super supportive. So when those grants are announced, I mean, it's within minutes. There's usually a message to me, you know, hey, let's go get it. What is this? Let's see what we can do. And so um, you can see real quickly there, I just put a couple of them, you know, 625000 I believe that was the largest award that was given that year in that round for welding. And we started that at East Bay. Beautiful shop. Um, you know, when, when you, you know, the, the nice thing for us is, is Lauren works with a lot of our vendors. And sometimes the vendors will come and they're great people, but they'll tell us things. But when Kevin and his folks can come and say, you don't need this, this is what you need. This is what we're using day to day. And our curriculum will support these machines, this equipment. Um, that's an invaluable thing. And he's very modest. Um, he grants, answers the phone all times of day and night and weekends. Um, and, and him and his guys are always out there supporting us. So um, some of the, the success we've had, and, and of course, now you got to realize we did start small. Um, and it takes a while, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, for the kids to ramp up when we do these programs. But we did have 10 graduates, um, six that went into welding and four that went into electricity. And then every year we've grown. Um, we've been one of the, the largest groups of pre-apprenticeships in the state of Florida um, over the last couple of years. So thank you guys, and really thank you, Kevin, for his help. Okay, thank you so much. And then we'll move on with um, John. From career source thank you miss combs and thank you everybody for being here today and thank you for giving me a little time to talk about what we do at career source tampa bay uh career source tampa bay is one of approximately one of 550 local workforce development boards across the country one of 24 in florida and essentially how we are governed is by um a federal law called the workforce innovation and opportunity act of 2014 an iteration of that law has been around since the New Deal way back in the 1930s. Um, so we work um, with partners like the school district, with Yvonne, to connect. We call it, you know, our tagline is connecting talent to opportunity. So that's a fancy way of talking about a base, econo a base economics term of helping supply meet the demand of, of, uh, of, the, of the business community. Um, what I'll talk about today here, we have programs that help that, that assist anybody from the age of 14 all the way up to 99 or whatever, however long you want to work. But we really focus on the programs that really help uh, age 14 to 24. Those are our youth programs. So youth is broken down into two separate categories. One is in-school youth, which will be primarily our partnership with the school district, Yvonne, uh, and other community partners. And that's really helping guide or, or move um, the, the talent that lies in the student population to some opportunities that may be, may, write, may be a job right out of high school or at least give them a career exploration opportunity to maybe find out what it is they want to do. Um, we are funded uh, to the tune of about $25 million a year, give or take. And really, we are, that's, that's really what we are. We are a funder and we are a convener. So we're not necessarily the direct service side of this anymore. We used to, we used to function more as a direct service provider. What we're really looking to do now is focus on more partnerships because we've got people like Yvonne and like, uh, the, the, the CDC of Tampa and the UACDC uh, up in, um, um, up in the university area that really have the population kind of captivated and they're the same population that we're going to use our funds to assist through their training and career development. So the biggest program that or the, the most probably the most influential program that we that, that we work with every year is called the Tampa Bay Summer Hires Program. That's just our, our summer jobs program. And essentially what we do is we look for people, uh, students who are looking to A, either put a little money in their pocket this year, um, B, learn about what might be available in an industry sector, um, or C, um, who we've identified as some of our future leaders and, 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 work, and work those folks through what we call the Future, uh, future Leaders Academy. Um, we serve about anywhere from last this year, we served about 500 students. We've served as many as 1,000 in a year. Um, had some great momentum and then kind of COVID came along and we all know what that did to everybody's momentum. So we're 
kind of rebuilding the program this this year and into next to really get the mat, get the most impact for for our partners and for our talent. Um, and if you look up there, you'll see, you know, we served about 466 young adults this year, uh, and we worked with almost 100, 100 employers in Hillsborough County who had up to 800, who had almost 811 positions available for what we called paid work experience placement. And essentially all that means is we partner with an organization or an employer. Um, we, Hillsborough County Public Schools is one of our big, I think you guys are our biggest partner um, from a placement side. So we manage the risk. So they are, our, they are employees of CareerSource Tampa Bay that have an agreement through a host work site with it, with, with it be Hillsborough County Public Schools, um, Bank of America, Tampa, Bay, Tampa General Hospital, whatever. We, we provide, we want to make sure that every opportunity is there. So what we want to do is mitigate any risk that an employer is going to fill so we can kind of, kind of remove that barrier. Because um, again, when we, our funding follows youth that it's eligibility based and they have to identify barriers to employment. So whether that be transportation, whether that be um, uh, delinquency, pregnant and parenting, uh, um, economics. We want to make sure that we remove some of those barriers so they can really get into a um, an honest to goodness career exploration experience. And what's not better to put a little money in somebody's pocket? We pay our we pay our um, summer youth participants uh, thirteen dollars an hour, uh, and they work up to twenty four hours a week. They work for up to eight weeks in the summer. Um, we're still trying to get used to. I come from Pennsylvania, so. Um, it's weird you guys go back to school so early around here. It's, I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, I had to pull my son. Uh, we had a vacation scheduled, and he's in second grade, and I completely forgot. We had vacation scheduled into the second week of August, and then I had to pick him up and put him in a car and take him home because I forgot. So um, you bet. Um, it um, when when you when you kind of tie in what you see from. Uh, just some demographics, just some data, you know, from a census standpoint. You know, if you look at 20, if you look at 2010 versus 2020, there's about two and a half less children age 18 and under in this country than there were 10 years ago. So what does that mean for us? What does that mean for schools? What does that mean for employers? For us, it means changing the dynamic and scope of what we're trying to do, moving more away from being a service provider and moving more towards being a community partner, braiding kind of those funds that we get with what you guys do at the school district with what HCC does, you know, and in, in, in their programs. And really, you know, there's not much room for error anymore. So being more of a partner and less of a service provider is important for us. Um, one of the things that we do also, and, and Scott talked about it a little bit, is you know we, we have a program called the ACE program. And that really is, now it's misnamed, but it was Commissioner Gwen Meyer's baby, so she gets to name it whatever she wants. Um, it's the Apprenticeship to Career Empowerment. You know, if, if you ask me what I would name it, it would be more of the Pre-Apprenticeship to Career Empowerment Program. And essentially what it does is it allows an earn and learn model. So we work with about 40 different employers and we work with about 20 different um, education and training providers. We identify youth that are age 18 to 29, many of whom are disconnected from um, disconnected from school or employment. So how do we engage these folks in training? And what we've often found, particularly what we call the opportunity youth population, is um, they would love to participate in a 12-week training program, but you know the common response is, well, I have bills to pay. I got to pay rent. I got to pay my, you know, I got to pay my utilities. I got to pay, I got to eat. My, my family has to eat. So how did we change that? So what we did is we worked with the county. We braided some of our funds and, and what we got from um, Hillsborough County to create a true earn and learn model to where, again, we pay up to 20, you know, up to 29 hours a week for up to 12 weeks. We pay them a wage of $15 an hour, three days on the work site, two days in the classroom or vice versa. Um, and we do it in a bunch of different fields. And what we looked at, you know, is we've got the apprenticeship and pre-apprenticeship kind of angle covered from trades. The trades have done a fantastic job, and I still can't figure out why other industries um, don't look at the trades model and see the success they've had because there's a lot of there, there's a lot of portability in what they do. So we focused on some some core programs, um, and we really looked at. You know, we, 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 we crunch some data. That's kind of what we do a lot at, at career sources is look at data through 
census data or through job posting data to really f try to identify the largest gaps. So, you know, we've built some, some pretty interesting programs. So the, the tracks we have are digital marketing, cybersecurity, front-end software development, business operations. Uh, we got a great partnership with PEMCO for, for an aircraft electronics technician. Um, we just started a CNC milling program and operations um, uh, program and uh, TechWorks, which is uh, help desk IT and support specialists. And these are all anywhere from eight to 12 week programs to where it's not just earning and learning, but you're working with a career coach and you're looking at placement after the fact. So we've got about, I think we've got seven cohorts through. We've employed about 30 people so far. We've still got about five cohorts going. And the great thing is, is really engaging employers from these specific, you know, really it's IT, um, finance is something that we're trying to really kind of get our foot into because when you look at the critical need in those industries and then you couple that with populations that are historically underrepresented in IT and finance, particularly people of color, we want to give we want to give all the population in Hillsborough County the opportunity to do whatever it is that they love. And quite frankly, from an employer perspective, this is the first time in many, many years um, that, you know, that the demand far outweighs the supply, even in a place like Tampa where we get tens of thousands of new residents a year. New residents drive new jobs, um, and new, those new jobs still aren't, you know, they're still outpacing the talent that's here. So employers have become, you know, they, they have always been great partners, but they have a very keen ear now because really they're looking to how are we going to grow, and, and you've hit it on the head. You know, if you look at most employer census, it's kind of, you know, 10 years ago, it was in the mid to upper 30s, and probably in the trades, it was higher than that, you know, 10 years ago. Um, but it's really focusing on the talent that is captivated within, you know, 200 and, I don't know, Addison, 220,000 students. How do you start, you know, at a, at a middle school level and kind of funnel them into, into, um, into career opportunities or at least career exploration? Give them some idea of what's available uh, in Hillsborough County. So those are our, kind of our two pro, two core programs. We like I said, we do a lot um, with all job seekers, aged fourteen all the well, aged eighteen all the way up through you know however long you want to work. But really wanted to talk about what we do on the youth side, um, and those were our two main things. So I want to make sure that we leave time for questions. So um, thank you very much. I appreciate everybody's time. Okay, thank you so much. And now what we'll do is we'll begin a time when. Um, School board members can ask questions and engage. And Mr. Porter's taking names, so go ahead. Ms. Perez and Ms. Green and Dr. Mr. Washington. Okay, Ms. Perez. Thank you. Thank you for this awesome presentation. Um, you guys seem to really um, work together. You have a real good ebb and flow when it comes to um, our students and their pathways um, to career. Um, you know, I want to I want to talk about the line in the movie um, from Kevin Costner um, in the field of dreams. If you build it, he will come. But I'm going to change the word the word it. I mean him today. Um, and I notice, you know, you guys build it and they, they are coming. Um, but I want to talk about exactly what Mr. Flanagan said when when it comes to our middle school students and getting them excited about this possibility because I notice you're targeting on um, the high schoolers but we're losing a lot of our students in middle school towards the end of middle school um, especially if they're um, you know late in enrolling in school and they end up you know dropping out because as, especially in our uh, the black and Latino students, as Mr. Flanagan stated, um, you know, um, we need. How do we get our middle school students excited? Um, are you targeting targeting our middle school students and letting them know about this program? That's my first question. Um, yes, ma'am. Actually, and that's something that. Um, Yvonne and I have talked a lot about through the years um, as we built Future Career Academy. Um, we, you know, we, we, it started small and it's gotten bigger. And our goal has always been to then, how do we now move down to the middle schools? How do we then take that down and create experiences for, for those individuals? And then we even went to elementary. And how do we now, how do we tie that whole pathway? And so 
Um, I think that's probably to come. I think we're we're still brainstorming. We're working on that. I know in our worlds we're doing some of those things, but Yvonne may want to add a little bit about what we've talked about. And the urgency that I mentioned is our program truly is a triage program to be dealing with them in their senior year. And um, I I can't wait until <laughs> until we've got this completely fleshed out this year now that we cover the county and then we're able to work backwards from there because that interest, the, the aptitudes, dispelling uh, misunderstandings about gender stereotypes, ethnic, all of those are key pieces of what we do. The sooner we can do that and them have a vision of what their potentials are, we are, we are very much excited to be able to do that. So thank you. You spoke something, um, you know, that, that exists right now and especially in our schools and our students, they have a lot of hopelessness. You know, um, they, they're, they want to be able to look for hope um, you know, future out, outlook and possibilities. Um, and you mentioned something, without hope, people perish. Um, and, you know, to, when, when our students step outside their homes, especially in the neighborhoods of color, you know, in the Latino neighborhoods, they don't see that hope. And to be able to get to school and be able to say, you know, if I just get to high school, I have something. They have something for me. And this is awesome. I got to tell you, Yvonne, I just love your vision for our children. Um, and with mental health and the school to prison pipeline, you know, this looks like something that will help decrease, if not eliminate, and help our students towards their path in the future. So thank you for what you do here. Thank you for including our children. You know, um, but if we could get our children in middle school, you know, and show them that they have something to look forward to, you know, I could see something really good, you know, um, expanding here. But thank you. And we want to grow with fidelity to make sure that everybody has good experiences and good outcomes. And when we've shored that up on the full scale, we are, yes. And, and so I, I appreciate that. One of the key indicators for students is graduation rates. And that's something that we've seen as we've worked in East County, that we give them a reason to get across the finish line. Every one of our employers reinforce that and talk about that, how important it is, and a reason for them to make them proud, to be an outstanding candidate. And that's one of the things that we, we hope that is going to continue to, to elevate through our work as well as one of those indicators for success. Thank you. Thank you, Member Perez. Member Gray? You know, we are just so blessed to have each of you um, in the life of our Hillsborough County Public Schools. Um, the commitment that each of you have shared is from the heart and it's from the concern that you have for the welfare of our children. I want to thank each of you as well uh, behind me. Um, the, the questions, you know, I really don't have the, the questions that uh, would indicate um, concern as uh, Member Perez also, but more of an appreciation. However, I think that um, before I begin, I have two, two inquiries. Um, before I begin, I'd like for you to think about where do you see yourself, your, your business model, in five years from now, um, and and I got a good trend from Scott that it, we are going younger. As Member Perez said, why are we not plugging it into our middle schools? And I know Superintendent Davis, you may want to remark on that in just a bit. Um, but all the while, um, we we have to fill in those spaces of interest and or and or motivate, find ways to motivate our kids to be interested in their future in their future alone. And uh, so what I want to just ask is, and it's, it's a question that, um, that we, we should all appreciate, where do you see yourselves five years from now, your business model? And, and, and this can just be a statement uh, as you answer or not. Um, and uh, perhaps, Scott, what do you, you, you say the trend's getting younger. I think for our district, and I think Mr. Jargo and I share this um, along with our superintendent, we're really competitive. Um, we want to be the best at what we do. Um, you know, when, when every one of those apprenticeship grants that came out, we got every one of them we went after. Um, 
you know, for us, for a long time, Hillsborough County Public Schools was looked at as really a, a leader across the state and across the nation, really, when it came to career and technical education and preparing kids. Um, when I was a student back in those days, I remember that um, very vividly. And so we, we took a little derail for a few years. And so now, um, you know, I, I see that Broward is ahead of us on apprenticeships. Um, I want to take them over really soon. So in five years, I want us to be on top. Um, on five, so a lot of the faster than statistics, that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's, you know, superintendent day one, you know, immediately said, right. why are we this low in this area? And so for us as a district, I just think we want to be the tops in Florida when it comes to any type of workforce education. And, and, and to that point, um, you know, the, you know, and thank you, Scott and Chris for putting that slide that talks about the, the money that's generated for our apprenticeships and, and what we do related to CTE. We did lead the state last year with CTE, fund, FTE, for the number of students involved in that process, and that's because of the vision of the work. We do have to create continuity with um, our pre-K through 12 continuity within our, our grade bands and also within our community neighborhoods. So if welding's at, uh, you know, one of our schools at East Bay and needs to transition to Eisenhower, then have an additional exposure to potentially some of our middle school students, I mean, elementary school students in the fourth and fifth grade, just to talk about terminology and common language. But more importantly, getting middle school students to be able to round through East Bay for them to be able to see what it offers. And the same token, being able to have Kevin and some team members transition in to be able to have those kind of conversations. So we want to make certain that we are being very intentional about that exposure because we do want to gravitate to Mrs. Perez. Uh, is is comments to making certain that our, our our students who are in our middle years who are trying to figure out who they are intellectually, emotionally, socially, physically, whatever it may be, you know what a weird time that we all had to go through it, and uh, but being able to capture them so they do have some vision for what they're trying to aspire and then have a greater understanding as they emerge into our choice program and where they want to go, inspire to go, to be able to be champions of what their uh, pathway may be. So uh, this will continue to grow. Uh, it's, uh, you know, Scott said five years, and we, we talked about by the end of the day, we want to beat Broward, so we'll work hard on, on that process. And, and <laughs> really, Scott, the, the reality is, and Kevin, you know this, Chris as well, that um, what's happening is East Bay with the welding, and thank you for that uh, go-to course, uh, Kevin. I didn't uh, get to weld, but it was quite impressive. Um, you know, the, the parents are looking at schools, families are, as to what vocation is there, because many parents, such in South County, are looking for the school that represents their son or daughter's uh, desire for welding, for example. So with that remark, before I ask Yvonne for her future five-year plan, Scott, what do you think about that in terms of uh, you, where do you see uh, where do you see this statement going? You know, wh where are we going with are we emblematic of schools emblematic of their vocation uh, opportunities? Yes, ma'am. And, and and for example, I mean East Bay, I think is a perfect example. That was an old shop that really was underutilized at the time. And so we had a beautiful facility in terms of structure. And Mr. Farkas's team um, was really inspiration, you know, very helpful in coming in and doing a lot of things for us. But, you know, we, we took an existing facility that for years in that part of county had been, you know, um, a mainstay. And when you look at ring power and you look at the port, even down South Manatee and all those areas, there's such a huge need for welders in that community. So I think that was a beautiful thing. And then it just, you know, like John has said, we do a lot of with braiding funds. Um, you know, we couldn't have built that lab at East Bay had Kevin not if I had to hire, you know, somebody to come and tell us everything to do, but Kevin came and did the consulting work with us. You know, Chris and his maintenance team did a lot of the stuff. And, you know, we, then we work with John and Career Source. And so we're braiding all these different funds, and then we get the grant from the state, um, you know, and we put all that together. It was a little bit more than 600000 I can tell you that. Um, <laughs> it was quite a bit more. But um, all the entities, when all of us are pitching in together, then I think we can come up with something really unique. Um, and really, John also mentioned with WIO, that's how our funding is now. In years past, I think when you looked at the Tampa Bay region or you looked at Hillsborough County Public Schools, we all were kind of marching in a little bit different direction. I'm not sure we shared a common vision, um, especially around workforce and whether it's the EDC, you know, all of us. Um, I've been on the, the, the career source board for 10 or 12 years, I think, um, working side by side with John. And so one of the nice things that I've seen recently is a lot of synergy and a lot of braiding and a lot of folks all working together, sharing a common vision. And so that's been nice where HCC also is part of that. And so we've all worked really well together. Um, and I think that's, that's the beauty of, of this. 
Yeah, uh, and and you're right. I mean, that's why we're so very fortunate. You're all working together, Yvonne. I you already have been a visionary. I remember in 2016 when you first. Well, actually, it was 2015, right? So 2016, there you were making all these relationships, but and now you've bridged to 32 high schools. So do you see your program? I don't know how much more large you can get, but you're growing. What's your future looking like? Um. Hillsborough County is an innovative center that takes their destiny in their own hands. And I get to be alongside of that and help shepherd and, and be a catalyst for a lot of forces, a lot of synergy, a lot of vision. And um, I, I do believe we're going to back this up. We're going to continue to innovate. We're going to continue to push for what's right for kids, mm -hmm. what's right for our businesses, what's right for our communities. And that's getting a lot of attention outside of Hillsborough County. It's awesome to get to tell the Hillsborough County story over and over and over and share. I, I may be the one getting to do the talking, but it's truly about the, those synergies and those partnerships and how we work together and what's possible exponentially whenever we do that. And so I don't have a grand design. I listen, I ask, I seek, uh -huh. and the feedback comes. Um, Publix, who's one of our um, great partners, has said they want us to go across their entire footprint and that they will leverage all of their partners and suppliers and everything else. That's the kind of mm -hmm. uh, momentum that we have, but all that I lay at the feet of who brought me to the, to the table. And that's this community, this county. And, and we're going we're gonna to make this the center of excellence to continue to innovate and to push further. It's exciting. Well, I better uh, get back in line because too much. Oh, Kevin. Yeah, I want to speak a little bit too. Uh, I think our model, we're going to get stronger because 15 years ago, 20 years ago, they started moving the trades out of the high school programs. Now they're bringing them back. Everybody's talking about it. Uh, before we were plan B. Now I think when they see how much money we make, uh, we're moving to plan A. So... <laughs> Uh, I definitely think we're going to be stronger and keep pushing uh, building trades because uh, welders, there is a need for them. You do a, sp a spectacular job, Kevin. Thank you. Um, Mem Combs. Thank you. Thank you, Member Gray. Member Washington. Thank you, Madam Chair. First, I want to say thank you all for making a great presentation. It was really nice. And your supporters over there, thank you all that you do for the students in Hills for Hillsborough County, as well as the adults, because you are truly preparing students for life. Um, I also like to piggyback off of uh, Member Perez, you know, in East Tampa, because that's where I was born and reared in East Tampa. So the, the Miller School kids back when I was going to school many, many moons ago, it was junior high. So now it's Miller schools. And when you talk to the Miller school students, they don't know what they want to do in life. They really don't, especially the black and brown kids out there, you know, because they go out and, you know, they go out to the areas and the community and they get a chance to see the people who are undesirable. And uh, sometimes we need, if we can work something out in the next years or so where we can get in those Miller schools and help those kids out, they'll be ready to go when they come to high school. And I can recall, uh, Back when I finished high school in 68, we had, we had workshops. I mean, we had wood shops and all, all kind of uh, type of equipment you could go in and work on. And I recall some of my friends had uh, a part a work, work relationship with GTE, with TECO, and a lot of them, when they finished high school, they went to work for GTE. But I went to college, and when I came out, they were making a lot more money than me. And I always, and I always remember that. And I said, you know, these kids could do more than just go to college because everybody's not academically inclined. Uh, and that's a fact. But if we could give them a career, like you guys are giving them a great career, give them an opportunity to go out and be successful. In fact, my grandson was in the program. Scott, you may know over at Milton High School. He loves the, he loved it. Um, so my concern is let's see what we can do in the middle schools. And, and help those kids out so they can move on, at least have something in their mind, in their minds where they can be successful. And in closing, and in closing, John, you kind of, you got me one time. You say they went up to 90 years old. 
Whoever wants to work for as long as they want to work, we will help them find their Man, Y'all just eliminated me. I might want to do something after the school board, you know what I mean? <laughs> but anyway, I thank you. I, I really thank you. You did a great job. Thank you so much. So, yeah. Mr. Watching, I can speak a little bit to what we're going to do at Career Source for engaging that, you know, five, six, seven, eight grade population. Uh -huh. When you look at traditionally how do you engage that, that population, you usually do a career fair, one or two career fairs a year. Mm -hmm. Think of the sheer size and scope of, of Hillsborough County Public Schools and, you know, how, you know, career fair, you get four or five hundred kids there, if, if it's a good one. What do you do with the other tens of thousands? How do you create opportunities for the other tens of thousands that, that would really do well and, and, and many of them being likely from East Tampa? So, you know, and, and I'll kind of touch on, on what do we see, where do we see ourselves in five years as an organization? we see ourselves working with other community partners to help create opportunities and touch points for any student that wants them and not just that wants them but give the visibility of what's available and i think that's incredibly important um creating a system to where it's not just relying on career fairs are fantastic and yvonne does a great job but there's many that for whatever reason can't attend so what do you do and you know how do you work with you know and there's many employers that can't attend so how do you work with the employer community writ large um to create whatever kind of structure it is in the city of philadelphia we had we called it career we called it career street it was just a method of opportunity for employers to talk directly to districts and parents to create one-offs if if bank of america wanted was going to do a job shadow at their you know, at, at, the, at one of their branches, they were able to populate that. They were able to match student and parent because I think we all know particularly, you know, it's really important to get parents involved um, in, you know, in, in career exploration with their kids. So creating that structure, and that's why we've, we have the, you know, I had the, um, I feel really, I don't know how I did it, but we were able to bring Dr. Clayton on board at Career Source Tampa Bay to help us build that structure um, because I think, again, it's incredibly important. And when you talk about, just demographics, um, less young people now than there were 10 years ago. It's really hyper-focusing our students as much as we can. I didn't know what I want to do when I was sixth, seventh, eighth grade. I barely knew what I wanted to do five years ago. So I, we, we understand that, but that is because nobody ever showed me. I didn't know. All I had to do is I knew I had to pass, I had to pass math, reading, and science, and in high school I had to pass theology too because I had the somehow got wrangled into going to Catholic school, but that's another story. Um, but that's all I had time to do. I didn't really have time to um, to understand what was available, or if I did have time, I didn't know how to go about it. So, you know, creating the opportunity is incredibly important um, because kids have other focuses. Some of what they love will be in, encapsulated in an employer that they go see. Somebody who loves science and technology would love to work for ReliaQuest or Align and see what they do, but the, the point is getting them there to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Flanagan. Um, Member Vaughn? Thank you, Chair Combs. Um, well, first of all, I would like to be invited to Weld, just so you know, not just super, not just Superintendent Davis. Um, but I, I appreciate, <laughs> thank you. Um, I appreciate this panel. I think this is a great workshop in conjunction to be able to talk about our CTE programs and all of our partners, and I really appreciate it. Um, I had, I, I did want to say thank you very much for talking about middle school because I had that down here too. You know, what are we doing to reach middle school? <clears throat> And one word that I've heard you use a lot that I like in, in the conversation is career expo exploration. And I know we're talking about how do we reach middle schoolers, but even if we're not necessarily getting them the jobs and connecting them with the partners, I think through maybe our financial literacy class that are now we're going to have to start mandating, if we're even just talking about career exploration, like what are the different jobs? What would you look for when you're deciding on a career path? What does job security look like? Because there's a lot of careers out there that might not offer that. What are wages? Um, how do benefits play into that? How important is the benefit package when you're looking at wages? Because over and over again, when we have forums where we connect with our middle school and our high schoolers, 
because it's not just our high schoolers who are talking about other things other than college and being prepared for real life experiences. It's our middle schoolers who are also hungry for that. So I'm glad that you touched on that and I think it's a good part of the conversation to have. Um, some other things that I wanted to say and then I'm going to pose you guys with a question similar to what member Gray did. You might have answered some of them in, in the questions, but I appreciate we didn't get to the slides with career source, but I appreciate the slides 36 um, on when you're talking about how we, you know, not just focus on our, our students, you know, who are able bodied, but people with disabilities, or when we're talking about our students who come from migrant families and making sure that we're connecting them, you know, I think it's important to talk about our marginalized communities when we talk about Hispanic and, and communities of color, but we also have to talk about other ways that our students might be marginalized and not have as much access. So I appreciate that you included those slides and that we're having those in the conversation. Um, the other thing is um, what I really wanted to kind of get a feel for is one are, are we also when we're connecting this are we talking about connecting our students with our city jobs our county jobs our you know municipality jobs are we hooking them up with our jobs at Hillsborough County <laughs> making sure that if there are people who do want to go into nutrition that's an option like I'd like to make sure that we're including that in the conversation because city and county and and school school board jobs can, or I mean school districts jobs can offer you know a lot of those benefits or job security um, hopefully that that those could be crucial in the conversation so I just like to know as we're expanding our programs are we talking about that and you can answer, yes, I saw you excited, please yes, do. I'm very excited. <laughs> I kind of glossed over the curriculum piece. And if we have how many weeks of curriculum, 20, almost 30 weeks of curriculum, um, 16 of those are industry exploration videos. And education is one that stands alone. We've pulled that out from underneath government. And um, I'll, I'll share a little bit extra detail on that in a second, but also government. Government is huge of how what an, what an overlay of employment of all different types from FDOT to the county to the cities. Our constitutional offices are big partners with us. There's, there's so much depth and detail there that we want to dive into and that we're doing and put in front of kids. So the, the really going deep in and helping them understand each of those industries. And if you remember, we have eight communities. We have hyper local companies that have jobs that they can get to featured in each of those communities' um, videos. Mm -hmm. So we're very sensitive to making this in my backyard something that I can get to and that I understand and, and, and so on. We're also trying to really connect with the kids about what is it, why, why do you lean into that? If you take healthcare, we paint that as the superheroes. Do you want to nurture? Do you want to help? Do you want to you know, save people's lives? Those kinds of things. And we, we do a divided path with that, for instance, of the traditional medical hospital doctor's offices, but also EMTs, firefighters, and really try and show them a, a really diverse group of, of jobs within each industry with localized employers. So yes, that's is essential as part of it. And our very first curriculum piece is budget and them doing the research to figure out what does it take to actually live on your own um, very simply per month, per year, and then beginning to translate that. Our businesses have spoken into a lot of the content we'll do with professional development videos this year and other exercises and so on that includes benefits, includes your brand, includes so many other things that our employers have said very specifically, we need to see this and we're willing to help. So helping them set them up for much better success with a lot of um, input from our employers to, to make sure that that's driving towards um, acceptance with job applications and so on. Thank you. Yes. And Ms. Vaughn, uh, as us, we don't care what color, what race, what height you are, what we, we don't care. We want everybody. Uh, they're given the same opportunity. And I know you mentioned benefits. Uh, every time we do presentations for high school students, like we have over 100 uh, come to our facility, they do not know what health care is, pension, annuity. They think mom and dad pays for health care and it's going to last forever. So that's what we try to educate them, and that would help us if they could get that in the classroom. Uh, I know you mentioned financial literacy, so uh, that would help us. And we are the only trade uh, that has a maternity program as well. So uh, if they have a baby on the way two months in, uh, our international will cover them until eight weeks after birth. Wow. All right, well, thank you. Is there anyone else? Because I have one question, and I'll try to make it quick. 
Did anybody else want to speak to that? Okay. Um, what are the obstacles or challenges that you face or that you find are the biggest ones that you want to overcome or that you are overcoming in supporting students or young adults and connecting them to different career pathways? Like, what are the biggest obstacles and challenges? <laughs> the challenge we have is they they come in and they're not exposed at a middle school, so they don't know what's going to happen. Uh, so they spend 10 years going around to different trades, different jobs, uh, then come to us. But I know the other side of it, if we get their interest on middle school, uh, I think we already have waiting lists for welding programs as it is. So uh, I'm happy because I guess we'll have two welding programs in each high school. So that will be good for us. <laughs> So I'd say the biggest bar the, the the biggest challenge for us is just awareness um, and, and getting a better getting a better giving the community a better idea of what we do at Career Source and how we how we partner with our um, with everybody at the table here and and we kind of left out one thing when we talk about and it's fantastic and it's wonderful um, we talked about we talk a lot about employees or getting people to employment one of the things we need to focus on as a system too is entrepreneurship uh, and creating job creators, I guess for lack of a better phrase, is really helping our students lean into that because we need job creators. We don't just need employees. If we don't, um, you know, the somebody's got to pay my social security. I'm really looking forward to retiring. And if we don't focus or put some of our focus on entrepreneurship, we all, you know, we, we, we suffer that risk in regards to what we're going to look like in the future. So however we do this, and you can do it through anything, and Yvonne, I'm sure you do it, Kevin. I'm sure there's lots of folks that go through your, through your apprenticeship program that run their own business now. So, so teaching the skills that are needed to become job creators is incredibly important. It's one of the 14 elements that we have to focus on uh, through our legislation, but I'll be the first to say that we don't do enough of it, um, and we want to figure out how to do more of it. Thank you. If I can answer, I, I want to share some great news about entrepreneurship. It is a key piece of an overlay across all of our industries, and it will have its own space and time. Um, and I always share, I grew up in a family of entrepreneurs. I, I have, I'm hardwired that way to tolerate risk and so on, but I also saw how to do it. And there's so many kids that are sitting in a classroom that are hardwired, but they don't have the environmental. And we want to be that activation piece. And in your, in all the trades, so many, so many different aspects of you come and you learn, and the pathways there, and how do you recognize that you, are, you're, you're hardwired for that, and making sure that we're the ones affirming, providing a pathway and a vision for the future, because that might not be an immediate. We're planting a lot of seeds where they might come to fruition and they attend the job fair or they've been in our curriculum the whole time. They have access to all those companies, and six months later, a year later that's when they go back and reference because they're ready. And there's so much to that journey that we just want to make sure that they have all of those aspects available to them at any point when they're ready to lean in and, and take advantage. Um, I would say that my biggest challenge right now is time. And I, I, I'm, I'm not a patient person, so I struggle with that. But the good news is, is that what we've seen and where we're positioned this year, the, the position of trust that we have, the responsibility that we carry. We are coming to the schools and we just have to walk through this with our new schools this year. English teachers, when we trained them this summer, I was very concerned. I know the burden that they have on them. First, to get their students across the finish line, but then all the rest of the add-ons that are included for them. And we were, we were kind of ginger about that, but how they responded and, and they were excited. They were, yes, it, we're glad we're owning it, we, it's, they've responded well to the curriculum of the preface that we've given with that, that, that we've, it's well done. It helps uh, align with state standards where it can. It's turnkey. It gives them flexibility and autonomy in their classroom. Those kinds of things that we want to make sure that we've set them up for success. By the time we get to the end of the school year, those teachers who don't know what's out there will have experienced this right alongside of their, their, their students. And the transformation that happens in those classrooms, on those campuses, when they realize how they're connected, how they're supported through those business advisory board lunches, how those businesses really want to lean in and support those schools, support those students, hire them, provide a pathway for success, time works itself out. 
and everybody will be better positioned for next year. We're also delivering our curriculum just in time this year, which is a little stressful, but making sure that it all comes through with all the elements and, and so on. Um, next year will be a little bit easier, but still just as exciting. And so I'm patiently going through this, and every day is, is such a delight to be able to support those teachers and those kids, and it's just a process that we've got to walk through. And we've seen it happen as we've grown. We know that the fullness of that will come for each of those campuses this year as well. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Member Vaughn. Member Snively. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, well, good morning. My apologies for being a little late and missing Ms. Fry's presentation this morning. However, I do feel pretty close to your program. Um, so thank you for your presentations, though, and taking the time to be here and share with us um, your not just your successes over the last uh, several years, but your vision for the future. I appreciate some of the school board members' uh, questions with regard to where, where you see yourself in five years and what's your vision and what are some of your obstacles. And, and challenges, um, especially uh, Member Perez. The, obviously, I think you hit you hit a nerve when we talk about middle school kids. I think we all can agree that that's a very pivotal time for a young person, and they kind of decide in that that segment of their academic career whether they want to continue being students or whether they don't want to be um, you know continue being a student. And so it's really uh, really incredibly important to engage them and give them some inspiration or inspire them to think about um, what their possibilities could be as as students so thank you for bringing that up and um, um, you know it's 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 been a whirlwind obviously I'm I've got a couple more months left before before leaving and I've seen quite a bit of um, ups and downs in our CTE, mostly ups uh, in our CTE programs. And I just, I feel incredibly fortunate to um, have the leadership in you all for these programs for our students. Uh, we have come such a long way over the last eight years. And I would love when you get a chance to, if you can share, uh, and not, not now, obviously, but some statistics about, you know, when eight years ago, um, our CTE programs um, have really evolved since then, and we were graduating a different number of students with um, certifications than we are today. And we have uh, certainly, our, our programs have flourished so much over the last years. And so I think it would be prudent to share some of the successes that you've had in the CTE programs over the last decade. Um, and it really was pivotal, pivotal when, um, Eight years ago, we had a board that really supported CTE. Like they realized, um, and so and so does this board. Uh, but over the over the the years, we realized that the percentage of students that go to college or a traditional university is a much smaller percentage than the students that that don't. And that was, I think, the first inclination to say, well, what are we doing about that, right? What are, we, what are we offering those students who are not necessarily college bound or university bound right after, right after high school? So these things are the perfect answer for our students, the perfect career opportunities that we're presenting to them that inspire them to do other things. Um, my question is, I think for, for accountability purposes, you know, what is your, what is your uh, way to measure success or, re, or the return you're getting? Like, are, what is your goal for how many students you want to graduate in the welding program? You know, we, you talked about in 2021, 22, you had 10 graduates, six in welding and four in electricity. Well, what about next year and the year after that and the year after that? Like, where do, you, how many students would it make it worth all the, you know, the time, the energy, the investment in all of these wonderful opportunities. How do you measure that? And and it's our job, obviously, to help you know keep everyone accountable for what your goals are. Where you know where where do you see yourself and and you getting there? But but how do you measure that? What is that? What does success look like to you? So um, thank you for those comments. So I think you know, and and John and, and Career Source have a tremendous amount of data, and we're always looking at you know, reports from uh, Department of DOL or DOE, and we're looking at high wage, high skill, and we're looking at, a, you know, the regional occupation list and the demand list. You know, when it comes to the trades, medical, IT, we're st there is so much demand and there is so much growth. Um, nursing, 
And so when we look at our capacity, we're nowhere near there. We are nowhere near at that capacity level. And so what we really have done, to be quite honest, is we look at those targeted occupations. We look at those in our region, um, and we have just really tried to make a push of this is where we have to grow. This is where we have to push. Um, you know, earlier you heard the superintendent talk about opening, you know, repurposing Bowers. And or not repurpose, but um, I guess that is the right word. We'll use that word for a minute. Reimagine. That's the, that's Reimagine. the word I need. Reimagine. Um, but we're looking at, you know, at Bowers and, and uh, Waters and saying, you know, how can we get more students, create more opportunities, directly directly connected to the business and everyone else with real jobs, real occupations that are needed. Um, so to tap dance around a little bit, um, we really haven't um, – oh, oops. <laughs> Time's up. I, I think we really haven't, you know, we haven't even come close to filling the demand for all of those occupations yet. Um, that's probably phase two. I know Yvonne and I, as we started this, we talked a lot about how do we capture, how do we get that. Sometimes the data is a little bit difficult when they leave us. Um, it really is because it's a lot of it is self-reported. And so sometimes we get the data, but we question how, you know, it's, it's such a small sample size. Well, it's Sometimes probably it's hard, hard to measure because once they, once they leave our school system, you know, what do you, you know, where, how do you get that information, right? And sometimes truly, you know, I think Kevin can attest to this. Well, have some students that they really think they want to do that job, but then when they get in the training program, they realize this really wasn't the job for me. Uh, that's very obvious in the medical. We get a lot of students who want to be doctors and they see blood and all of a sudden they realize, Hey, maybe I want to go be an iron worker. Um, and so sometimes it's also, though, you know, you learn about what you really don't want to do sometimes, which is a is also a great thing, I think, to teach kids. Mm -hmm. For us, uh, on MC3, I think is the numbers you see there, I, th I want to say that was our pilot, uh, and now it's tripled. So uh, I think getting the word out and, you know, trying to get more students interested, I think, is the key. Uh, and for us, I like to thank this board, uh, for passing the apprenticeship policy, which now they have a pathway through uh, high school. Once they graduate high school, then we're putting them on a job building a high school. So hopefully you'll build many high schools coming up. Uh, Thank you. And um, there, there's many elements that we're tracking. Um, one is completion. And Chris and Scott we and Daniela, we've been talking through that of what constitutes that. Um, and that that is a signifier to employers of value and formalizing that this year. Um, of course, then those that lift out and, and opt to attend are different events. That's, that's an element. Jobs, training opportunities, apprenticeship programs, all of those things are things that we celebrate and that we hold up as obviously the goal and want to put those out as, as often as we can um, with, with measurable impact. So lots of different elements there. Did you, and again, I apologize for missing your portion of the presentation, but did you talk about how you also open up your career fairs after the students leave to the folks who may have missed the first, missed it the first time? I appreciate that opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, we, our, our day of our job fair is two-part. Um, the employer set up, they see all of the students by noon. From noon to two is actually for adults. And that came because, again, listening, I got a call about six months after our first job fair that was at Plant City High School. And a student said, Miss, Miss, can I, are you doing that again? Can I get back in that room? And the urgency that she had, because it had, the light bulb had finally gone off. She was being kicked out of her house. She had no income. She had no stability and, and knew that there was opportunities there. And at that point, when they have graduated, we can't put them in with students. So that was how we started to walk out doing the adult job fair piece, as well as our employers, it rounds out their hiring needs. So it gives a, a, full, um, a full perspective. And this year with each of the three job fairs that we did, we had two to 300 um, adults that had pre-registered, attended, what have you, and that is available for all of our employers, training partners, and so on to capitalize on. And again, that goes back to the holistic lift because we have had a number of students who in their first job make more money than either parent has ever made. And their parents say, I want some of that. And we wanna make sure that it is open, all of these opportunities that we've assembled, that it is, it's available and anybody that's underemployed, unemployed, needs it, new employment, what have you, that that's all available. I could see where that's a win-win for employers as well sure. because then they're get feeling like they're getting a return on their investment of being there that they might actually, you know, obviously they want to inspire students, but at the same time they would like to yes. be able to offer employment to viable 
candidates as well, and, and so you're, you're giving them those viable candidates by allowing the adults to come back and, and do that. And sometimes the light bulb does go off a little late, yes. right? Yes. So. And, and our first question to employers is, do you have entry-level positions? We know they have the rest, so as long as they can service our students, we welcome them and they're able to do the fullness of that with, with all parties involved. Awesome. And I just, oh, did you want? I just wanted to add one thing if I could. It was really to Ms. Vaughn's question earlier was, mm -hmm. that's where we've picked up some of our workers in the school district. Um, so last the last one I attended, we had some folks that wanted to be bus drivers. We had some f adults that came in afterward, after the kids, and wanted to be security officers. And so we were handing them off to the folks and, you know, I'm texting, uh, you know, other folks saying, hey, I got somebody who wants to be a security officer and they already have the training and stuff. So um, we are there. We do have our team there. Yeah. And that adult one is we also have found where we were able to grab some folks and, and direct them um, into our HR stuff. That is awesome. I just had one quick question for, for um, Mr. Flanagan on the career source, and thank you for, for addressing that. Um, other sectors and industries, I know you're focusing on technology, a very robust list of career opportunities. What other industries and sectors do you see coming down the pipe? All of them. <laughs> Let me explain why. You know, even in a county like Hillsborough, where in the last two years, just the county has got about 50,000 new residents. We still have an undersupply of labor, but there's 30,000 job openings in Hillsborough County right now, which is why what they're do what, what everybody at the table is doing is so important. But I mean, if you want to look at industries that have, you know, high growth potential, obviously it's healthcare. Healthcare is a need for everybody. If you look at just raw job posting data, nurses and truck drivers. I mean, if we want to just do that, we could do that because, you know, fulfillment and logistics is such a growing industry, particularly in a state where more and more people are coming. Not just 50,000 hills, but almost two and a half million since the pandemic have moved to Florida. So those are probably two of our biggest needs. But when you look at industries that are really booming in, in particularly in Hillsborough County, it's finance, insurance, and, and IT, and giving everybody, regardless of where they were born, what they look like, who they pray to, the opportunity to get a foothold into those industries is incredibly important for what we're going to do. But I can't really boil it down to an industry because every industry needs talent right now, and that's not going to change for the foreseeable future. So we really look at how do we make, from a career source standpoint, what, what's, the most, what's the most positive effect to the community? So we try to hone in on some of those particular industries like IT and finance. Well, as a um, small business owner and employer in this community, I really appreciate it. I have had a passion for the last several years of connecting our school district to our business community. And um, I'm so excited for everything that, that you all have been able to accomplish for our students and look forward, even after I'm back in my business um, to hear the success, the continued success of all of these programs and connecting our students to, to jobs and careers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Member Snively. And, um, you know, quite a few months ago when I met with Dr. Clayton and, and Conchita Jones, we, we were talking about, and as I talked to Yvonne Fry, how archaic the way we look at things as far as our education here in America. When you look at Asia and you look at Europe for a very long time, I mean, I, I taught in Asia 25 years ago. At a very early time back then in middle school, they were looking at kids at middle school and high school to see what path they were going in. So we are really far behind. And when I look at... Um, I have, I'm, I'm lucky because I have a daughter who's a senior. When I look at most kids, by the time they get to their senior year and they've taken some classes in eighth grade, really a lot of them, all they have left is that English class, unless they want to take a lot of dual enrollment classes. Most of our students are grad, are ready to graduate that senior year. So a lot of times, you know, that year is a year that we could really look at technical and vocational and different programs that are available. So um, I think having two children who are completely opposite, I have, you know, both children are Hillsborough County Public School students. One is a CTE student who graduated, you know, over a year ago. And then my daughter, who's a se senior. And I think it's really important the way we look at things completely different. So one of the things that I'd like to see, I guess some questions and recommendations. The other day, my daughter came home with probably about seven pieces of paper regarding Bright Futures, scholarship, her resume. And the one thing I want to see, and, I, and I've talked to the superintendent about this, is I want to see that one sheet of paper that goes home with her that talks talks about our career and technical programs. Because often what happens is kids graduate from high school, they'll go work a job, maybe they'll go and, and 
start college at a very expensive private school, maybe not finish, and then they walk out with debt, and it's very hard for them to start a career. So I'd really like to see we have, we're, we're putting a lot of money. We're really expanding our career technical programs here. I want that one sheet that says, you know, these are the career technical programs that we provide here in Hillsborough County Schools. I no longer want to think of Hillsborough County Public Schools as a K through 12. I want to think of us as early education to career ready. That's how we need to look at. We need to really brand ourselves as from pre-K, we start serving children at a very young age. Every one of our schools has pre-K -pre programs. And then you don't finish when you graduate in 12th grade. We're getting you to be career ready. If it's through Career Source, Future Career Academy, through the apprenticeship program, through our CTE programs, I really think that's important. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about, and I know Ms. Fry and I have talked about this, or really what are the, I think of what areas do we need the most? What do I hear the most complaints about or emails that I get? One thing I hear all the time is about air conditioning, right? Because there's a shortage of workforce. We really need to create a really robust HVAC program here in Hillsborough County Schools. I want to see a really strong program so that way maybe we're paying for those kids' schools and they promise to stay with us for two or three years to support our AC and our HVAC. And then the other industries that we talk about is early childhood and the nursing program. So uh, Ms. Fry, if you can talk a little bit about some of the conversations we've talked about regarding around these these two two areas. Absolutely. Nursing has been in a crisis in the state of Florida for years, and we kind of are numb to it, but it through COVID, we saw how how dire it is. The other one that has certainly come to the national attention is teaching. And just, uh, it's been, you know, the deployment that we've had to do in this district and how that's affected districts around the country. And we've been able to have some early conversations with President Law at USF, um, and, and she's set, helping us set in motion around those two career fields. How do we build in a turnkey solution that is focused on entry-level positions that get some income stability but flexibility of schedules with those employers, as well as the, the, the application process starting and, and getting to those degreed programs so that there's, there is, there's support, there's, we're removing barriers, we're showing kids a pathway forward. So many times they'll say for a lot of reasons, finances, my, their family situation, on and on, I can't do that but they have an interest. And we've got how many kids, how many students in the CTE programs just around early childhood? 1,400? Last year that graduated. And there was not a lot of activation, if any, around next steps and how do we convert those into para jobs, into host, into all the other things and also be tracking them towards those degrees. And we want, we want to present this, as I shared, education, healthcare, those are two of our core industries, um, whether they're already in and they've identified, or there's an activation through learning about it and saying that is possible with the add-on that we're going to remove barriers, we're going to make this turnkey, we're going to support them through this process to help solve these two issues here in partnership with our technical, HC, our technical college, HCC, USF, and, and work that through. We're very excited about that opportunity and need the partnerships to help walk that through as well to get to a successful resolve. Yeah, yes, thank you. And so we see, you know, when we're looking at there were hundreds of teachers short this year, if we can activate those students in there, I mean, just I think on Friday or the Friday, I was at Cleveland Elementary and I met several paras and I was like, what is holding you back from becoming a teacher? And both of them said the financial part. So we have to really think of creative ways that we can partner with USF or other schools to make sure that teachers are walking out debt free so that way they can start working. Because we know we see that's going to continue to be a shortage across, across this country, but especially, you know, looking at our community and what we can do. So we need to continue engaging in that. Superintendent Davis, I know you you had a comment and then I'll, I'll move to Stacey Hahn, had, Dr. Hahn had some questions as well. Yeah, we do the chair, but definitely it's a priority for us and uh, we, you know, having conversations with Monica, having conversations with Scott and, and Chris, we do believe that not only should we start to be able to expand and create a longer, stronger bench for employees in the teaching field, but also for every uh, division within this organization and we should have multiple tables at the career fair. So. You know, we, we need to be there, we need to be present, but also we need to make certain that we have the awareness and exposure that John
John spoke about, about transitioning our students into programs within Hillsborough County Public Schools so that we can openly continue to win the talent war. Thank you, Superintendent Davis. Um, Mr. Porter, were you going to read the questions that Dr. Hahn had? She's okay, Member Hahn. Hi, uh, thank you so much. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person today. I have a sick child at home. But um, I appreciate everybody being here today and, and presenting around career and tech education. Um, it's certainly something that uh, has been um, a priority for the last four years that I've been on the board. And I know, uh, like as Member Snively mentioned, for the last eight years, and I want to thank Member Snively um, for spearheading really the expansion of career and tech education over the last eight years. It has grown immensely uh, under her leadership as a school board member. So I um, just wanted to mention that. I, I also, you know, have to agree with my colleagues. Um, I'm, all, I'm so, so happy to hear that we're inspiring kids earlier around the workforce development program. Um, we've been working really hard. I know Member Combs talked about how, you know, the, the U.S. has been um, kind of behind the times in regard to workforce development. There's kind of been this ebb and flow. You know, in the 70s, workforce development in the United States was really on fire. Um, and then around the 80s, when um, college was becoming, you know, the, the big goal, career and tech ed kind of got a bad rap. And, um, you know, now what I've seen over the last decade, but in this district, definitely focused with all of these partners on busting the myth around career and tech ed, um, which has been phenomenal. And I do think that's why there's this rising interest because we've been busting all those myths and really informing kids on how empowering these career and tech ed programs can be. So that's been really exciting to witness um, as an, a long-time educator and a school board member. I also um, want to share that this summer, the superintendent and I met with the college um of Education, USF College of Education Dean and his Director of Community Partnerships and Collaboration on creating um, pair-to-teacher certification program. And so we've been um, brainstorming around how to best do that and get the tuition paid for and allow the pairs to do their um, internships in the classrooms they're working in so they don't have to give up their paycheck or their um, – all their health insurance um, to finish their degree. And so that's moving along. And then we talked about expanding the teacher academies. That's something that I had done at USF. And, um, you know, it's really been something I'd like to see expanded here to do exactly what we've been talking about today. And that's, you know, we prepare our students to be everything and anything in our, in our community, but we need to prepare them and, and talk about the wonderful career of being an educator. And the, and the career ladder that exists within in education. So um, I have a follow up meeting uh, out at USF in two weeks to to um, move those two initiatives forward. So really excited about that. And I was hoping that maybe um, the superintendent could talk just a little bit about how he's worked so hard over the last year, maybe even more than that now, to really align our workforce programs with community needs? Because I know, Mr. Superintendent, you've been out there really meeting with business leaders and community partners. So how have you made sure that we're aligning these with the, with the needs of our community as well as beyond Hillsborough County? Because we know people move, move around. Yes, ma'am, to the chair. Absolutely. This is a, one of the things we have to be able to be reflective about. What's the growing needs of our community? How are we going to offer continued programs? And one of the things we continue to do is not only have outreach with corporations, companies, agencies locally, but also working with the Florida Economic Opportunity to really identify jobs that are going to be financially attractive and allow our, our students to be able to earn that livable wage. And we started at around 52000 dollars when we, we launched this last initiative related to when we announced last year the opening of a construction academy, the opening of medical academies, and those were the growing needs that we identified immediately within our community. We engaged over, I would say, Chris and, uh, and Scott, maybe over 100 
and 20 uh, different agencies to come out at the table to unpack and identify what the needs are of this community and how we would stand up these two or, or three initiatives within our school district as we redefine. But it's, it's a continued approach. And one of the greatest things is one of the first times ever in Hillsborough County, we had every medical institution agency at the table ready and prepared to be a part of this initiative and um, it really talks about you know not only the nursing shortage but also looking at all the nursing technicians looking at the EKG technicians looking at laparoscopic technicians cardiologists uh, technicians all those are areas that we need to be able to grow and uh, you know the, the beauty is is not only asking what the need is but individuals such as Kevin and, and our leaders and our CEOs and our agencies and corporations being at the table, defining the equipment, defining curriculum, being able to really uh, identify uh, true pathways. And they want to be able to come in and not only sit at a, on an advisory board, but be actively active partners within our classrooms in transforming some of these classrooms to look like their current location and agency. So there's exposure to cutting edge content curriculum and materials. So, you know, uh, you know, one of the things, the, the biggest things that I would say the plus is in the millage is being able to get in the community and, and listen, learn and grow and identify how we can get better. And uh, this has been a, a trying part or, or instrumental part of us being able to reimagine and revolutionize our CTE pro program, CTE programs within our within our organization. Thank you, Dr. Hall, for asking that. Yeah, no, I appreciate you talking a little bit about that because it's so important as we're, you know, we're developing kids around being prepared for the workforce that there are, you know, there's a pathway for them once they graduate our programs and our programs align. And the last thing, I just want to um, share also is uh, when the superintendent and I met with USF College of Ed, um, we also talked about them embedding a Montessori mm -hmm. endorsement mm -hmm. into their early childhood program. So as we expand that program, we're building that pipeline of teachers. So between, you know, the early childhood endorsement, the parent to teacher, the teaching academies, these are all teacher to school pipelines. This is why university school district partnership work is so important because we can't build these pipelines by ourselves. Um, they take some time to prime that pump, just like anything, to get students through those programs. But I think, um, you know, when we talk about, uh, you know, a long-term outcome or vision or goals, uh, this is where we have to start. And I think down the road, it's going to pay off immensely for our district and, um, the, the uh, professions that we're preparing our students for. So thank you everybody again for your time today. Thank you, Member Hahn. Member Gray. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just uh, contouring a little bit more specific questions. Um, Superintendent Davis, you you heard from the board, most of us consensus that we definitely need a, um, a real time plan initiative for uh, and, and Member Combs, you're so correct. Uh, in actually, in Europe, in Germany, they have tracking. Kids are tracked in their middle school years as whether they'll be vocational or whether they'll be college bound. It's, it's almost as simple as that. It really comes down to that. So, perhaps you can, uh, at, at at a time that is consistent with this uh, workshop, we can actually see a plan that you will be integrating the middle school communication wise and uh, to help also share what we have real time um and uh and hopefully the the numbers will grow uh will grow and member snively it's so important that and actually it's a motivator that we do have data that does support that there, there is growth there the trend is is coming up and there is more involvement and enrollment um and I think that will manifest itself to high graduation rates and, you know, a successful future uh, for our Tampa Bay community in, in many, many aspects. I would like to also see a, um, a, a communication, a, a plan, uh, Scott and, um, and John, that uh, when we address the teaching shortage, uh, and Yvonne, excuse me, um, we need to really pay attention to that acutely because that's the business that we're in is education. And if we are paying attention to it acutely, um, then I would like for, uh, to hear or to see, and I'd like for our board members to see what do you really tangibly 
are going to put out there to attract our uh, future teachers, if you will. Sorry, uh, Kevin, I'm, I'm going to have to leave you out on the welding department at the moment. But, but we know the nurses have had a need. I mean, we're truly uh, deficit in nursing, but we are super duper in emergency situation. Uh, John, perhaps you can share what 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 do you see happening through your um, career source model that will attract teachers, um, students to teaching? So I think it's really, I think Superintendent Davis said it a little bit earlier as just awareness, you know, and, and, and pulling some of the data, you know, what's, what, what's the median, what's the median starting wage for an educator uh, in Hillsborough County? How does it compare with mid and entry level positions in other industries? I mean, you've got to attract, you know, the, the, the first way to attract talent is to talk about how is this profession going to help me make a living? Um, so it's, it's critically important. And then talking about total compensation. I think a lot of people don't talk about total compensation. Kevin, you said it before, you know, when, uh, just an example, when we hire somebody, we, we, we give them what their salary or their hourly wages, but we also give them their offer letter talks about total compensation about, you know, so what does the school district pay for in regards to healthcare, um, pension? I mean, those are real costs that districts and, and employers incur. And it's, it's a great, piece of knowledge and education for a job seeker is, yeah, I understand I'm going to make $50,000 a year, but wow, I mean, it's like they're actually paying me $75,000 a year, whatever it is. And that's how you make your 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 profession competitive versus other industries. And and when you look at, and again, here's the issue, um, you know, any, and for all my fecal, fellow economics majors, you know what happens when supply shrinks and demand grows, the cost of that good or material talent goes up. So other industries are becoming competitive with teacher salaries and wages. So it's difficult. You've got to really highlight, you know, on top of your love of it, every, you know, I, I truly believe if you want to teach children, you have to have a love for it because it is such an important thing. And it is, it's not the easiest thing in the world. I have one seven year old that makes me want to pull my hair out every day. So I can't imagine being in a, in a classroom of 20 of them. Um, so you've got to have a love for it, right? But you've also got to talk about from an economic perspective what that means to me and how is it competitive if I want to go be a, 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 a nurse or a medical assistant or I want to be, I, I, want, I want to get my foot in the finance industry and then also talk about the pathway a little bit more. You know, your paraeducators, what's your process to get them from paraeducator to teacher? I mean, having all of that, people want information now a little bit more than just, it's not just where you're going to start, it's where you're going to finish. I think it's incredibly important. And that's not just the education, quote unquote, industry that suffers from that. That's all industries that don't do a very good job of that. Thank you. Uh, Scott, did you want to make a remark about how you feel like this can be brought forward in the teaching recruitment? Absolutely. Thank you. So um, one of the things I think that excites me is when Yvonne called me um, one afternoon and kind of started to pitch her new idea, um, which is normally how that happens, you know, Friday at five o'clock or something. And I get a call from Yvonne and we're talking about it. But the beauty is, you know, we'll have students in our CT classes and they come in our classrooms. They're going through an early childhood program. So obviously we know they're interested. Um, but a lot of times they'll get the certification, the easy peasy or the one of their other uh, certifications. And then they graduate and we really kind of lose touch. And then what becomes difficult is if there's not another entity to hand that off that those interested students off to, sometimes they just get lost in the minutia of, you know, HCC, USF. And, you know, I, I'm a, I have two sons in college um, and, you know, like to think I kind of knew what I was doing. And there was a couple of times when it was challenging for me as a parent to get my own children through navigating. And I work for the system. Um, so I think that um, having an entity that we can almost hand off those future teachers to, that then can say, okay, let us help you navigate now, you know, HCC, USF, whatever, and kind of, and then give them back to us and gently hand them back to us at the end. I think that's really a component we've been missing for a while. And really that's kind of one of the things that's exciting me about the conversations that we're starting to have moving forward with that. Thank you. And Yvonne, looks like it's put in your, your hands again. Yes, we've had such great success with a lot of straight through entry level or going into apprenticeship programs, things like that. When we start talking about the degreed programs, we've got a deeper level of work to do. And that is about that collaboration of how do we get them 
again with that urgency before they've left campus completely we've got a lot it tied up with a bow and you know we know those students that already are in those CTE programs and so on we're bringing other types of employers directly into those and this is just a natural extension able to and when we talk about nurses our health care entities they pay for that continuing education and so that's that's easier mm -hmm. we've got to figure out and um, member Han and I've had some conversation I know she's plowed a lot of ground with this we want to help take this through and bring those solutions back to our kids and those families and help them make this as easy of a transition as possible with all of those details attended to that they feel supported and are able to cross the line into again those working condition the working the flexible working conditions and the degree seeking opportunity that is going to be with a great employer like Hillsborough County Schools. Well thank you thank you each and every one of you for initiating what you're doing um, and and member Combs that, that's all from me right now. Okay. Thank you. We just have a few more minutes. I know Member Perez had a comment, and then we'll be closing. Thank you, Madam Chair. So um, to the point of that you were mentioning, and thank you for saying this, that, you know, when you speak to the students, you know, many times you're able to care, capture their um, parents, you know, to um, find employment for them. So with, um, we have um, over 388,000 um, um, folks here in Hillsborough County that are under the poverty level. And um, an uh, issue with generational dependency on government, on government assistance. Um, because, and this is a problem because it's parents not knowing how to secure a path in life and the children, you know, follow that path, unfortunately. Um, so do you keep statistics? You know, I know universities keep stats on first generation students going to college, attending college. Um, do you by any chance keep statistics on um, these families, the first um, students that are going through this program and the possibility of being able to capture their parents to, um, you know, get them into the, the first job security, you know, um, um, pathway. I'm curious. This would be really neat to capture this information. I really. agree. There's a lot of data that the school district has that is they they're you know very careful with that dis, with that data, <laughs> and we are very sensitive. We're living it alongside of those kids and mm -hmm. communities and so on, um, but the data speaks for everything. And one of the things that we're working through with Chris and Scott and Daniela and her team, um, Tara, who's the survey queen of, of things, is how do we capture that information throughout the, the year from beginning to end? How do we move the needle completely, holistically, and so on, with a focus initially with the kids, but then how do we layer in those families and so on? And um, that takes a lot of bandwidth and a lot of expertise. Byron and I have had conversation about this as well with Career Source. Um, and, and data to me is everything. So as we continue to lean in within the confines of what the, the district data is allowed to be evaluated with and so on, Superket has helped us with that significantly and we'll continue to work that through because that is so important. It is so important. And I come back to, I'm a privileged white woman. I'm in rooms that a lot of people don't even know exist. It's my responsibility to prepare and connect and bring those others into those rooms for their success, not just to get them there, but so that they can actualize their own success. And that is what our intention, that's where we move from, and then working through that with how do we capture that data and those results um, as, we're, as we're progressing is extremely important. So, Ms. Press, one of the things we do at Career Source is for our for our participants, um, they enroll in our state system of record, which is called Employ Florida. And Employ Florida allows you to track longitudinal outcomes for people that have either enrolled, exited, and then we look. So, we're our 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 success metric is based on placement into employment at specific times of the year and placement in a wage credential attainment skill gain. So one of the things that we're trying to do, and I know we're, we're, we're still working through this, it's a long way off, is working with Hillsborough County Public Schools. And does it make sense, or particularly for students that are looking to go into the labor force directly after school, having ha having some type of an agreement to, to enroll those students into Employ Florida 
because we can track those longitudinal outcomes. It ties directly to sun tax uh, and social security wage information that allows us to track those wages at second and fourth quarter and what that average wage is um, at entry and then at second and fourth quarter. So we, ha we have the mechanism in which to do it. I think, again, it's making sure that, you know, it aligns with, um, I think, it, it, am I saying this right, FETPIP? Is, is, that, is that the right? Yeah, so it aligns with that to make sure that that is something that's doable. But it's how we measure, you know, our success and allows us to find out that we served 19,000 job seekers last year. We placed 5,500, you know, at an average wage of $22 an hour. I mean, that's how we're judged. So we have the mechanism in which to do it. I think it's just figuring out how to make it allowable between entities that that, that could help. To be able to lift our students because that 38, um, 388,000, you know, includes our students that are attending our schools. But to be able to not just lift them, but these families would be amazing. But again, thank you for what you do for not just our students, but their families. Thank you. Thank you, Member Perez. And in closing, I want to thank each and every one of you, um, each of the members, Career Source and the Future Career Academy and all the union apprenticeships and CTE, because we know, I know we're all here for the same reason, because we want to strengthen our community and we want to make sure that Tampa Bay is the best place to live in. And how do we do that? We do that by making sure that the workforce has people who can work there. And to remember, as we talked about with the CTE, it's really about kids getting skills. And later on, sometimes when they, they go into a company, Next thing you know, they're going to be the CEO or they go through colleges. A lot of people, a lot of companies are looking for good workers. And I love the idea that we're finally putting this into English class where kids, when they graduate from high school, they know how to create a resume. They know how to look at somebody in the eye. They know how to interview. These are all really important soft skills that are unfortunately not translating often and that we need to. So I really believe that we are really on, on the pathway of continuing to be um, one of the best in in, in Florida and throughout the country and really looking at the importance because 60% of Americans go to college. So I don't go to college. So really to look at um, what we can do and if we can secure like Dr. Uh, Mr. Member Press said, if we can secure the families and having careers and, and professions, then we're going to secure those families and continue to move that. So Superintendent, I'll allow you to close that. And thank you, each of you, for coming today. And thank you for all the individuals who came here to support as well. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We, once again, echo what uh, Chair Combs spoke about with thanking the, each of you for being here and also just being a partner in this work. This work, we cannot do in isolation. We have to continue to get stronger and better every single day and really identify agencies and corporations and leaders that are willing to help us and really help this community. As relates to the board, appreciate the feedback related to expansion of drilling down to our middle schools and trying to find proactive uh, ways to uh, create uh, simplistic but powerful Powerful communications and then the same token having those pathways continue to transition that openly makes sense and then being able to make certain we identify the particular areas that our needs are in Hillsborough County what we're starving to be able to hire for not only outside of the teaching profession but all of the other positions that we need in order for this so uh, the seventh largest school district in the nation to operate making certain that those are transitioned to, to the pair to pro opportunities and given everyone a sense of hope in this community so it is all about gaining access not only to students but also their families and strengthening the each household and we'll do that in a collaborative manner and thank you again thank you so much and this workshop is adjourned thank you